All right, welcome into the 33rd team. Glad you're with us. Trey Wingo here alongside longtime NFL wide receiver Golden Tate. The Monday night game is over. That may be the best news, Golden. The game is over. It went to overtime, and the Chargers go on to win it 19-16. to Look, I think we first of all have to give a lot of credit to Justin Herbert. In that week three game against the Chiefs, fractured rib cartilage, he's not going to be right for the rest of the year. The Chargers O-line is banged up, but he made a couple of big-time throws, including the one in overtime, to really allow them to have a chance to win the game. Absolutely, and despite all those many, many issues that he's dealing with, O-line, his ribs, yeah. which I've had rib injuries before, and the worst. You can't breathe, you can't laugh, you can't cough, you can't do anything really, let alone get hit. There's only so much numbing cream can do. But anyway, despite all of that happening, he still was confident enough to stay in the pocket and make clutch throws like you mentioned. And on the flip side, Denver, Russell just looked like he was tap dancing in the pocket the entire night and just no, no confidence, wasn't sitting in, missing reads, just trying to scramble and work at, at, at first, but man, Ooh, kudos yeah, to Herbert. I, yeah, let's let, let's let's settle in on the Russell thing here for a minute because in the first half or the first quarter, I think he was ten for ten. He had three throws of thirty-five yards or more. That, we hadn't seen any of that. We're like, okay, hey, this, this is the Russell you know. This is the Russell I know. This, this is the way it's supposed to work. And then nothing, like Correct. literally nothing after that. What has gone wrong? Well, I, I think uh, the Chargers made a very easy adjustment and just said, hey, just one, cover the guys and make the tackles and we're just going to we're going to blitz you. Um, and, and Russell's just not what he used to be. And, and maybe it's a combination of age and the, the new situation, but it just looks like a complete storm over there in, in Denver. I mean, not great coaching. He's trying to get settled in still. You look at the receivers, and they're not really getting open unless the defense makes a mistake. They're falling down. They're just not on the same page. It's it's a lot of everything, but naturally, all of the blame is going to fall on two people, the head coach and the quarterback. But it's yeah. it's everyone. But look, for $245 million, I expect you to, to make something happen. Something yeah. happens. Well, he, he, it seems like he's missing a lot of, like, on, on the first drive on third and two, the tight end was right there in front of him. He missed it. Now, he made up for it with a great throw to the touchdown on the on the rail shot uh, later on in that first quarter. But for, for a guy that's played with him, what are you seeing from him or what are you not seeing from him that you used to be able to see from him? I The Russell that I've always known has always had a, kept his composure, been very confident, and his ability and the people around him. Um, and out there, I, without him verbally going out and saying it, it just seems like he's so flustered and frustrated. And he, I just know he wants to burst out and say so much, but because of he's so worried about his image and and all these other things, he's just going to keep saying, you know, let's go Broncos no country. We're going to stay with it and let's ride. And yeah. that ain't going to cut it. That's not cutting it anymore, especially not in that division. So, look, look, I, McManus – has scored their kicker, their field goal kicker has scored over half of their points this season. Yeah. And they're not paying him 245 million. I guarantee you that. No, so, they're not. Look, I, instead of Russ getting the offensive linemen, Rolexes, and, and whatever the quarterbacks get the O line, maybe he should get uh, McManus a, a very nice present because without McManus, they would be, they would have zero wins, in, in my opinion. So. Is is it fixable? Is what you're seeing out of Russell and Nathaniel Hackett? Look, you're right. It's not just Russell, but for most of his time in Seattle, this was not the Russell Wilson. Everybody. So when you factor in, as you mentioned, the coaching, because Nathaniel Hackett's had some issues. There's no question about it. And the, the wide receivers aren't on the same page. Is what we see in Denver outside of that first quarter tonight, is it fixable? <laughs> I think it's I, I do think it's fixable. I'm just not sure. I haven't put my hand on why it's so bad in the first place. But once I do, I think you're going to have to get rid of that person. Um, I do think Russell has something left in the tank for sure. Um, but is it fixable this year uh, in that division? Mm, I don't know. I don't know. But 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 then again, look, Denver. 
their defense is playing very, very well. Very well. Their that kid, Baron Browning, is unbelievable. He's absolutely. unbelievable. And so because you have a defense that's going to give you a chance like they did, like they had tonight. Yeah. And so uh, I don't know. I, I have so many questions. Like, why is Melvin Gordon not on the field? Uh, I just I, I don't know. I, I just don't know. Yeah, well, listen, one thing that is fixable is I don't think we're going to see a lot of them in primetime anymore. They've, they've got a, a, a Sunday night game later on in the season in December against the Chiefs. Unless it's fixed, I'm thinking that one's going to be flexed out. I don't think we're going to see Denver in these – their last two games have been primetime games. That Thursday night overtime loss to the Colts where no one scored a touchdown and the one here where they got one. Um, as for – you mentioned Brandon McManus. Let's talk about Dustin Hopkins here for a second. He hurt his leg on that first extra point. And then he went out there and made three kicks and collapsed to the ground on each and every one of them. Obviously, there's some issues with that right leg. He's a good kicker, so the team likes him anyway. Let's be clear about that. But when you see a kicker do that, what does it do for the camaraderie of him being not just a kicker but a football guy? Honestly, I, that is something I've never seen on TV or, or certainly in person, a kicker having that much mental toughness and physical toughness. Like, he is tough as nails. His The leg that he kicks with is hurt and yeah. noticeably hurt every single time he steps on the field. Every time the camera's on him, he's stretching it. Has He has pads on it. And he has enough mental focus and – discipline and and pure will to go out there and execute and key key clutch moments that is that is overly impressive i don't want anyone to get lost in that like yeah. it wasn't his off leg it was his kicking leg okay right and to make i mean and these weren't like just extra points these were you know decently tough tough kicks he found a way and as a as an offensive guy or defensive guy coach i'm going to i'm giving this guy the game ball and I'm like, thank you. Like, thank you. You just did something that I didn't know it was even possible. Like, and I'm just hoping that his injury is not too significant. But this story could get even more weird if it comes back. This guy's playing with, he's been playing with a torn meniscus or ACL or, or something yeah. crazy. Well, he was way. working on he was working on a quad injury before that. It looked like he was doing the back of his leg, and you know how that works. If something is hurt, you compensate for it somewhere else, and it looks like the the quad is the front of the leg, and it looks like it was the back of the leg or the hammy or something. We'll, we'll try and get more information about it as it comes yeah. down. But this is what we do know for sure that the Chargers won again. They're four and two. Denver falls to two and four. Denver now goes cross country on a short week after playing overtime to take on a very, very inspired jet squad mm -hmm. and the uh, chargers head up to Seattle to take on the Seahawks. Yeah. And let's not forget that, um, Salas, the, the head coach for the jets, when I, when we were in Seattle, he was one like, the, he was one of the assistants. So he knows Russell's game and they're going to have a really good game plan. So might want to hop on that uh, jets train J E T S train right now yeah well they, they got playmakers across the board like you can make a very compelling argument that they have the offensive player of the year and Brees hall the running back the rookie of the year and the defensive rookie of the year in sauce gardner so uh, that's going to be no easy test as it has been for the last few years when you go to play the jets golden always good to talk to you man we'll see what happens next week can't wait see you soon